God our, our offerings and worship him with giving those things to him. And during this time, I want to invite uh, Dave Sack to come up here, and he's going to share with you all how uh, through the, the rooted experience, God has increased his awareness of, of his activity in his life and even made him aware of opportunities uh, and given him an opportunity to share about uh, who Jesus is to him uh, with a friend of his. So go ahead, Dave. could pick up that phone and call the guy, but coward that I am, the phone stayed in his pocket, and a couple days go by, and I just put it off and put it off, and when God had had enough, so I got a phone call, and it's Frank, so I truly believe that God prompted him to call me, and I, I think that's when I learned that the phone was there, so I'm on the phone with him, and I'm not very good with chit-chat, but we're chit-chatting away. to him about Jesus because you prayed for this to happen. Why would you pray for that and then not follow through? It'd be ridiculous. So the phone call is winding down and um, I'm ner I'm super nervous and I blurted out, I said, Frank, would you ever be open to talk to me about God and Jesus someday? And he said, sure. And there's a little part of me that's hoping he'd say no and I'd be done with it, but but I said, okay, how about Saturday at 10 o'clock? So this was like a Thursday. So I had a couple of days to get ready. And, and I went back to the rooted group. I would kept them in the loop, you know, all of this. And um, asked them to pray for me. And I uh, talked to my wife and the church. And I talked to Pastor Ray and asked him to pray for me and asked him for some pointers. And he said, you know, don't, don't forget, you can't convert this guy. which actually took a lot of the pressure off because, you know, it's in God's hands. All I can do is just do what I can do. And by the way, if you got Pastor Ray in your corner, good things are going to happen, right? We all know that, right? So the day comes and he calls, and the, for, the, for the first 30 minutes, I, I talked to him about God the Creator. And I said, you know, we see his handiwork in nature. You know, he's the master architect. He's the... Frank had never really heard these arguments before, and he, and I, and I said, you know, can you can you say that one more time? I don't know about a couple of times, and you know, this guy's an atheist, right? And and I said, you know, you, and and he said, but I believe what you're saying. There's there's something out there. And I said, oh really? And and then I just sat there and and I said, I just can't do it. Um, but he said. Risk life and limb to proclaim his resurrection. Who would do that, you know? And he said, yeah, I, I've heard that argument before, but what does Jesus mean to you personally? And now my heart is pumping 100 miles an hour. And so 
But see, this is where the rooted group comes in because one of the things that we, we did in that group is uh, everybody gives a personal testimony um, at each, each meeting, a different person. And I had heard many of them, and, and I had thought about what mine would be. And I said, I said this, and I, I said, you know, um, by nature, I was not used to preaching to children. And I said, even though I don't preach to children, I want to be used by you to preach to them. Isn't that cool? fail quite often and that's why I'm here today. I thought I was done. <laughs> this is not a, a great reunion and I'm glad that we had that. Um, but I, I need you to be more open. Um, I, need, I, I need this to really dignify us in God. Long story short, he, d he didn't convert over the phone, but, but um, for him and said yes and if you will find it in your heart to pray for him he will he will give you the commitment um so the story's not over i'm expecting god to, to use me in, in that so i expect to preach in conclusion i just have to tell you that that i love you and Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave, for sharing. And I, and, I, and I know Dave would love me to say this, that to God be the glory in all of this. Dave doesn't want this to be about him, but about what God is doing in and through him. And, and Dave, I got to tell you, it has been a blessing and just a joy for me to see how God has grown you and worked in your life through the Rooted experience. And I want to see that for all of you guys. And that's why if you are not traveling through the Rooted experience right now, I want you to look, be on the lookout for doing that, engaging in that uh, ahead uh, throughout the rest of this year. We're going to be offering that uh, just after Easter and then again in the fall and going on into the future. Be a part of that because God, uh, I just want to see God at work in all of your lives. So let's pray, friends. Uh, Lord Jesus, be present with us. We know you are here. Show up, open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us here today, to make us more aware of how you're at work in our lives and to make us bold to share about what you've done. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had the Reverend Dr. Colonel, and I don't know if he has any other titles, uh, Michael Ziegler here from Lutheran Hour Ministries. And I don't know about you guys, but that was a blessing for me. But it also was really challenging, right? Because he, he gave us these spiritual conversation cards and then said, hey, you should write somebody's name down on it that you know that could stand to know a little bit more about Jesus. And I hope that you've done that if you haven't. There's still time. If you didn't get one of these cards, they're at the back. You can pick them up. I've written down somebody's name. I'm looking forward to opportunities that God is going to give for me to share with them. 
And in that, he reminded us of this important calling that each and every one of us has, right? Each and every one of you that says, yes, I'm a child of God. Jesus is my Savior and my Lord. Each and every one of us has this calling, and that is to be a bridge builder. Yes. So it sounds like we need to remind ourselves of this calling, okay? So here we go. I am called... To be a bridge builder. Okay, I think you guys are the best with doing that. I had to repeat that with the other groups. So I want to dig into this calling a little bit more because this is a very high and holy calling for us, a very important one. And I want to look today at a a specific piece of this, uh, of being a bridge builder, uh, really a tool that God gives us to, to live out this calling as a bridge builder. And that tool is your story or your testimony. I think a good uh, definition for testimony is God's story in your story. God's story in your story. You see, it's, it's your story because really what you're doing is you're simply sharing what God has, or you're simply sharing about your own life, right? Events that have happened things that you've experienced and seen and heard in your own life. You're sharing about your life. It's your story. But at the same time, it's more than that. Because it's not just your story. It's not just about you. But really what you're sharing is where you've seen God at work in your life. How you've seen and heard and experienced Jesus show up. Why you believe that he is your Lord and your Savior. God's story in your story. Now we hear this all throughout scripture, this call for us to be witnesses, right? And to be sharing about Jesus and the impact he's had in our lives. One of those is 1 Peter uh, chapter uh, 2, verse 9, where we hear first this, this wonderful blessing and this wonderful uh, gift that God has given us. It says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. But Peter doesn't stop there. He says, All of that is so that you might proclaim the excellencies, how amazing this God is who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And just a chapter later, Peter goes on to say, uh, in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord. If you want to honor Christ as your Lord, then always be prepared to make a defense, to give an account, to to give the reason for this hope that you have in Jesus as your Lord and Savior and do it with gentleness and respect. Now we we hear these passages and many others again and again, right? So we, we see from Scripture that clearly this is part of what it means to be a child of God is to share with others what Jesus has done in our lives, to talk with others about Jesus. And yet it's still probably one of the hardest things, I think, for most Christians to do. It's one of the things that we fail to live out the most in our lives. And I think part of the reason is because we don't believe this truth. We don't believe this, that your story, your testimony is a powerful tool in God's powerful hands. That your story is a powerful tool in God's powerful hands. Now we, we may believe this generally speaking, right? right? We've, we've heard those stories of that 180 degree turn where someone was in despair and their life was a wreck and, and everything was falling apart and then, and then God showed up in some way and And their life was transformed and made new and they're a completely different person. And and we felt the power of those stories, right? They've built us up and they've they've shored up our confidence in God and, and his mercy and grace. But when it comes to us, when it comes to you and me, we struggle to believe that it's true. We struggle to believe that it's true for me. Part of it, it might be because we we haven't seen God actually use our story to to make an impact in anyone's life. 
Or maybe we're just, a, we're afraid, right? We're afraid that, uh, that we might not know what to say. Maybe we look at these people that tell these stories and we're like, man, they tell those stories so well. If I try to tell my story, I would just fumble around and it really wouldn't make an impact. Or maybe it's that uh, there's, there's part of our story that we're ashamed of and we'd rather not tell people about and we'd just rather be who God has made us to be now. But friends, no matter what the excuses are, really when it comes down to it, the problem is that we fail to place our story into God's hands. Right? This is something, our story is not our own. It's something that God has given us and has entrusted to us and that we are to use for his glory and for the blessing and benefit of others. And yet so often we keep it to ourselves. And it's that reason, because we fail to place it in God's hands, that's why we don't see him using it. Because in our hands, it's not powerful. But when we place our story in God's powerful hands, he can do amazing things beyond our imagination. So I want to take some time here to dig into three things I think that each of us can do so that we can more fully place our story into God's hands and that we might see his mighty works in and through us. So the first thing that we can do to place our story into God's hands is to be aware. To be aware. And this is really a twofold thing. Okay? And the first part of this is that we need to be aware of God at work in our life. It, you need to be aware of God at work in your life. So let me ask you a question. How many of you believe that God is at work, that he's active in your life each and every day or at least every week? Raise your hand nice and high. That if you believe that God is active in your life every day or at least every week. Awesome. That's good to see. Now let me ask you a second question. How many of you, if I asked you right now, could give me in a specific example of where God has been at work in your life this week? That's a lot less there, guys. What's the problem here, right? What's going on? We're, we're missing something, right? And that's not to condemn those of you. I, I admire you for being honest if you didn't raise your hand on that second one. I've been in your place. There's been many weeks that I've gone through and I stop at the end and look back and say, why didn't I see God at work? Right? There's this, there's this separation between, yes, we believe that God is at work and active in our lives, and yet somehow we don't see it. And it's because we're not being aware. We're not actively looking for him to be at work in our lives. And the problem with this, right, is if, if you're going to share about how God has been at work in your life, you first need to know how God has been at work in your life. Now, I think there's a few reasons that we have this lack of awareness. And, and one of it is I think we have a misguided concept of where God is. Sometimes we can, we can get in this idea that here, when we gather together with God's people on the weekend and in this place, that's where we meet with God and, and God fills us up and we receive his life and that's where we see him work. And, and then we go out to the rest of life and we just go about our day and do our thing and we, we take care of it ourselves. But that's not true. Yes, this is a great and wonderful thing to gather together as God's people. And he does meet us here through his word and his sacrament and through God's people. But God is just as present and active in every other aspect of your life each and every day. Whether it's at the supermarket or at work, we're spending time with your family doing chairs around the house. Or even, yes, at the bar, at the pub, having drinks with someone. That can be a place where God wants to be active in your life for you to be impacting others, to give him glory, and to be a blessing to others. The second reason I think we lack this awareness is 
Sometimes we just get too focused on all of the things going on in life, right? The to-dos. We get focused on that to-do list, and so uh, we, everything just seems a blur like this, right? We're just going through and trying to get everything done, and so we don't even stop to take a moment to look and to see God at work. And so for both of these, I think what helps us to be more aware is is starting each and every day with an expectation that God is going to show up that day. That starting each and every morning, whether it's in prayer or how else, saying, God, I know you're going to show up today. Help me to see it. Help me to know it. And then to go throughout that day intentionally looking for God, seeking where he's going to show up and and work in your life that day. And if you do that, I promise you will see him at work in your life more. It will open your eyes and change your vision. And that really leads us into the other part of being aware. Yes, we need to be aware of where God's working in our life, but also in the lives of others and the opportunities, the open doors he gives us to share about him with others and to show his love. Paul points to this in Colossians chapter 4. He says, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, toward unbelievers. Let your convert, or make the most of every opportunity. See, Paul is assuming that we have opportunities. God gives us opportunities all the time to impact others for his glory and for their benefit. He says, let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. My eyes were really open to this this truth that if I'm seeking and more aware of looking for God at work and giving me these open doors that I will see them and and things will happen, that God will be faithful. Uh, About a couple years ago, I went on a a conference, a, a regroup conference it's called in Atlanta, Georgia. And just before that, we were going through our first round of the Red Letter Challenge. If you guys remember that. And I had just preached right before I left a, a sermon on that last week of, about witnessing and sharing and talking about Jesus with others. And so I had decided that on that trip, I was just going to be open and just listen to the people that God placed before me and wait for him to give me opportunities, open doors to share about him. And you know what happened? The most amazing thing happened. Every person that God put before me in my travels and my journeys along the way, he gave me an opportunity to speak about him. It blew my mind how he just opened up those doors in places I, in the past, if I hadn't been looking for it, I could have completely missed. And I don't know what God did with those interactions, but I I trust that he is going to do some awesome things beyond my imagination that I will never know in this life, but maybe I'll get a glimpse to see the impact he made in eternity. This is what this spiritual conversation card really is about, is heightening our awareness to to God at work and the opportunities he gives us to talk to others, to share with others what he means and how he's worked in our lives, that we would write down somebody's name and And that helps us to start looking. It changes our vision that we're looking for those opportunities to share. And prayer is another one of those things. As we pray for opportunities like Dave did, for God to give us those opportunities, he will be faithful. You see, when you become more aware both of God at work in your life and about God at work in others' lives and the opportunities that you give him, gives you, You place your story into his hands. And your story is a powerful tool in God's powerful hands. The second thing we can do to place our story more fully in God's hands is that we care. That we care for others. We show them God's love in our actions and in our words. I want you to take a moment and and think of one or two people in your life, who had a profound positive impact on you. Think of one or two people that had a profound positive impact on you. For me, it might be someone like my high school track coach, Joe Allen, or my high school biology teacher, uh, Mr. Cooley, 
or uh, Dave and Heidi, my pastor and his wife from my home church that I'm still really good friends with, who would it be in your life? And then thinking of that person, I, I wonder, why did they have such a profound impact on you? What was it about them that, that made that impact on your life? I would guess for most of you, like me, it was because they showed that they genuinely cared about you. They valued you in your life. Yes, yes, they knew some stuff, but it was only because they showed that they genuinely had interest and an investment in you and your life that you listened to them and took those things to heart. Jesus speaks of the power of our care for others in making him known in Matthew chapter 5. He says, you, you all are the light of the world. A city set on a hill, it can't be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. That's ridiculous. They put it on the stand so that everybody can see in the house. And in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. They can see your care, your genuine love for them. And as a result, may give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And Jesus didn't just speak about this, right? But he lived it out in his ministry, right? Wherever he went, he first came and he cared for people. He didn't give Zacchaeus the, the story, the sermon first. He came in and to his house to show his love and care for him. And then he spoke his words of truth. You see, caring for others, it opens up those doors, those opportunities to share about Christ. We don't care so that we can share, but we care, and then God uses that to open up those avenues for us to share with others. When you care for others, when you show genuine love to them, you place your story in God's hands. And your story is a powerful tool in God's powerful hand. So we're aware, we care, and finally, we share. Because ultimately, if we're going to put our story in God's hands, we have to speak with others. We have to share with others about how we've seen God work in our lives. Now, when I, when I said that word, I, you know, I can see all of you, and I think I saw a few of you. Does this word share, it can be kind of daunting. And when we hear it and we start to think about sharing or talking with others about Jesus, our anxiety level raises a little and we get a little fearful and we're like I don't know about that Jesus and I'm with you I've been there I still at times am there but over time this word share actually has become a freeing word for me instead of a a, a fear provoking word and it's because of this because share doesn't mean convince or convert, or change. That's not what God has called me to do, and that's not what he's called you to do. The measure of my success as a witness for Jesus is not in whether or not that person comes to faith in Christ, whether I convince them or not. Being faithful, being obedient, means I share. I tell others what I've heard and seen and experienced, and then I place it into God's hands. I let him take care of the rest. I trust that he is mighty and powerful enough to do what he said he's going to do, that he wants to grow his kingdom, and so he's going to grow his kingdom if I'm faithful and obedient. Now, there might be some of you that think, Pastor Mark, that's well and good, but I don't really have a great story. Maybe you've been a Christian all your life and you, there's not this dramatic, like, my life was a wreck and in shambles and, and then God showed up and it's all transformed. What would I even tell people? How would my story actually impact someone? 
How could God use my story for his glory? But let me assure you, each and every one of you has a story that in God's powerful hands is a powerful tool. It doesn't have to be this dramatic change. It just, it can be an ordinary, everyday story. It just needs to be real and heartfelt. Let me give you an example. So about a year ago at this time, our family was excited and we had these great expectations because our oldest son, Ezra, uh, he was preparing, uh, he was finishing up preschool and we were excited for kindergarten coming ahead. And so we were, had already started talking with him and, and hyping it up like, hey, are you excited to go to kindergarten next year? And, and here in the month of February is, is oh, registration opens for the LSA. And so we were getting ready. And then you get scheduled for your kindergarten screening. And we are all excited. And, and Ezra goes to the kindergarten screening. And if you know anything about Ezra, he's our, our anxious child. And as the teachers came to get him and take him down for the, the screening, he froze. He just froze up. He was feel, filled with so much anxiety and fear, he just couldn't go any further. He ran and he clinged to Jen and refused to go. I have to tell you, this was like all of our plans came crashing down in this moment. We had these great expectations and plans of, of how this was going to go, and now we're wondering, well, if he doesn't pass the screening, what are, what are we going to do? Where are we going to send him? What, now he's not going to be with his friends. What? How is this going to work out? And we were filled with fear and anxiety and and worry. And I just remember that time. It was was horrible. And and I know it's a small thing, but it was very real in that moment. And then I remember there was a time in that midst of that chaos that I I just stopped and I prayed to God about it. And I said, God, I I don't know what to do about this. And and he just brought to my mind, uh, reminded me, that he is mighty and powerful, and that he has a plan, and that no matter what happened, whether he passed that screening or not, that God was big enough to work that all out for Ezra's good. And as he reminded me of that, I just had this peace come over me. The worry, the anxiety, the fears, they, they melted away, and my trust in God was strengthened. And that was just, that was freeing. It was a joyful moment for me as I stepped forward into that. And if you know, Ezra is in kindergarten now, and uh, he's, he's doing great, and he loves it, and uh, so thankful for that. But I remember that, that God gave me the blessing of that peace, even in the midst of the uncertainty of that time. It's a simple story, and I don't know if you connect with it or not, but I know that there are people that will connect with that story. And I trust that God can use that story to strengthen and embolden people to impact others for his glory and for their benefit. And the same is true for each and every one of you. Friends, your story is a powerful tool in God's powerful hands. Your story is a powerful tool in God's powerful hands. And I want to help you as you begin to form that story. I want to equip you so that you're better prepared to share that story. And so I want you to take a moment and uh, pull out your worship folder. And if you would turn to the inside, you'll see we have a diagram kind of like that's on our screen, but it's uh, flipped to be vertical. And this is a wonderful tool from Lutheran Hour Ministries, once again, that can help you begin to form and and think through uh, one of these uh, times when you've seen God work in your life. And so I want to start you on this path. So so right here and now, I want you to think about a time where you have seen God at work in your life, where you've seen God show up, where you've seen his faithfulness. Think about a time when you've seen God work in your life. Okay, now that you, as you think about that story, and you begin to think through that, 
uh, kind of the beginning of, of forming that story to be able to tell to someone is thinking, what was the situation? What were the circumstances, right? Story, it was kindergarten was coming up and, and we were going to the screening and then there was this moment of chaos, right? And that usually our stories have that moment of chaos. So what was the situation in yours? And then after you think through what was that situation, how did you see God show up? Where did you see God act? How did you see God's faithfulness, his love, his mercy, his grace, whatever it is, how did God show up? Was it through a, a person? Was it through a sermon? Was it through uh, scripture? Whatever it was, how did God show up? How did he show his faithfulness? And then as you recognize God showing up, as you saw that, what was the result of that? What was the change in your heart, in your mindset, in your life? Maybe God met a need that you had and that just strengthened your faith even more. What was that result? I pray that throughout this week you would take some time to, to think about that more for maybe this moment when you saw God at work that you're thinking of now and another one and begin to work through this a little more. And I want you to know this isn't this isn't meant to be like a rote story now, right? That, you know, you're like, you come up to somebody like, hold on, uh, let me pull out my story here. No, this is for you to begin to think through it so that you've thought through it so that you're prepared that whenever God gives you an opportunity, you can just honestly, in a real way, share it with someone else how you have seen God at work in your life. Friends, your story, your story is a powerful tool in God's powerful hands. Your story is a powerful tool in God's powerful hands. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Then place it more fully into his hands. Be aware care, share, because I got to tell you, this thing has a greater impact than anything else. What amazing privilege it is that God would use us potentially to impact someone's life, not only here and now, but for all eternity, for all eternity, that we might have the honor and privilege to be a part of God bringing someone out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is amazing. What a privilege. What a blessing. Don't miss out on it. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are so good. And we thank you for the ways that you have worked in our lives. The, the people, Lord, that you have used to tell us about you, that have given, that through them, Lord, you have brought life to us. Help us to do the same to share about you, Lord, to first be aware of your presence in our life and the opportunities you give us, to love with your love each and every person that you place before us. And Lord, then give us the boldness to share and then to trust you with the rest, that you might be glorified and that more might come to know the life-giving truth of that you are the savior of this world, that life is found only in you. Thank you for this wonderful privilege. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up. And receive the blessing of our Lord. May our Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you that you might know his love. And may he continue to pour out his unending favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Let's sing praises to our great God.